Welcome, everyone, to Celebrity Josh. I'm your host, Celebrity Josh, or Josh Rackless, which is my legal name. Or maybe I'll come up with a new stage name. Today <laughs> uh, is April 24th, 2020. Uh, we're still in quarantine. Uh, the world is locked down. I am in Ottawa, Canada, and Hildy Rue, is that your name? Yeah. yeah. Well, Hildy Rue. stage name. Oh, their stage name. Okay, well, we'll yeah. get into that. <laughs> Hildy is, um, are you in Mexico City? I am right now, yes. Okay, so this is my podcast slash YouTube show. This is all an experiment. Um, today was my first Skype recording. And so what, what I'm planning to do with this, uh, hopefully, is uh, post this video on YouTube. And then also I will take the audio and put it up as a podcast. So if you can't see what's going on, people, um, well... I guess you can go watch it on YouTube if you care to see what's going on, but hopefully you'll be able to also hear what's <laughs> going on. And uh, if you can't see what's going on, you're missing my beauty, so I feel bad. Oh, and also Hildy's beauty. Uh, <laughs> are you, you have red hair? Uh, yeah. Excellent. I, I used to as well. Um, mm. So, so uh, I figure I should marry a redhead because redheads are going extinct. They uh, are. Have you heard? Yes. So... Um, let's see here. So yes, so today, well, just in terms of letting people know technically what's happening, I'm on my phone today. Yesterday, I was on my webcam on my laptop, and it seemed there was a bit of a lag, like my face was not lined up with my audio, and it might be because I have an old 2013 MacBook, it might be because it's, uh, it's too full of uh, memory, all my YouTube projects I've been sitting on for 10 years are taking up most of the space. Um, and then I thought, okay, so maybe I'll try it on my phone today, and maybe tomorrow I can try it on my dad's computer because it's plugged into the internet. But I don't have the password to log into his computer, so I don't want to get into that now. But we got to do things just uh, rough and tumble. It's all about just turning out content now, not being um, too much of a perfectionist, right? Right. Yes. Okay. So that's that's a pretty good introduction. If this was like a normal podcast, I'd probably say, oh, and please support our sponsors and stuff. Right. Um, don't have any sponsors. Although I do have a website called Josh Got It, J O S H G O T I T dot com, that a friend made for me uh, to help promote her website building um, uh, site. Like she makes websites for people, and uh, and I'm going to start sending out newsletters uh, on how to make money online. I've tried everything, and so I'll give you all the tips. So if you want to go to Josh Got It dot com, you can do that and sign up for my newsletter. Okay, that's my sponsor, and I've already wasted three minutes. Do you think anybody's still listening? I hope. I hope. Um, so I read your bio and uh, it's, it's long and you've done a million things. Uh, so I'll probably let you sort of introduce yourself more, but um, you seem multi-talented. You're a dancer for sure. Most of your bio seemed to be about dancing and, uh, and also you're singing. And uh, does that sum it up or are there even more? What, what's, what's going on? Uh, okay. Yeah. So I, that's how I, kind of define myself as a multi multi way multi I don't know how you say it in I think I, th I think um like a I think I, I can't remember if it's Marie Forleo do you know her she's kind of like this life coach Tony Robbins type of person I think she calls it uh multi hyphenate uh oh, which is wow. yeah which is kind of cool I'm like oh yeah I'm a multi hyphenate kind of thing <laughs> Um, and nobody so understands one. what that is. So yeah, nobody have would <laughs> have any idea. Here, one sec. I'm going to rotate my phone here, mm -hmm. and I'm going to swipe I... up. No, no. I'm just going to put it on. Uh, do not disturb. There we go. Because I was getting like every Instagram oh, yeah. notification. I'm like, please, people. I'm busy. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, I guess, but you could also call it a multi-talented. No, multi-passionate. I think that's what she calls it. Um, mm. Because she she's always talking about people who say, oh, you know, I should focus on one thing. Everybody says I should focus on one thing. And she's like, no, you can do a bunch of things. And I think she talks mm -hmm. about, like, figuring out ways that you can combine all your talents to do something. Like if you're, I don't know, a dancer, actor, you could do a class. Of, I don't, I don't know. I, I can't think of an example right now. But whatever your unique, your different passions are, you could combine them to create something completely unique or something. Or just, just work on them all. I'll have to watch her videos to see. But I know she's the one that says, that mm. gives you license to do different things and not say, oh, you just have to focus on one thing. Do you get that right. from people? Everybody tells me, like, uh, oh, you, you're too scattered. Yeah. Especially people that are not artists. They 
don't get it. Like, oh, my family. <laughs> right. um, and uh, most people in Mexico outside of the art or performer circle, um, I guess they just fear that I might start doing one thing and then just change my mind and don't never complete anything. But it's really something that it's, um, it, it's a very interesting thing because anything you do with your body, which is what I've discovered, um, for example, acting, dancing, and even singing, actually kind of is able to inform the other uh, discipline. It's, it's as if you were a musician and you played several different instruments, then it's like they can, um, each instrument can give you something different that you can use overall. Like, I don't know how to explain this, but all my dancing years, all my training has actually, in it, it gives me some sort of, I don't know if advantage, but as an actor, I've seen that a lot of people, especially in theater, it's 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 very common that people are not aware of their bodies. That's actually something that actors, especially I see stage actors, train many years to do, to just be able to, oh, I have my hand and I have to do this in this line. I have to put down, I don't know, this mug. And people really forget to do it. It's It's like, and as a dancer, you are trained to be aware of absolutely every part of your body at the same time in a very like holistic way. It's like not focusing on just one thing, but just the whole the whole way the energy flows, the whole way that each part of your body balances the other out. It, it's so anyway, um, I think especially with stage performance i've been able to integrate very interestingly both the dancing and the acting especially singing um actually informed the way i use my voice in theater as well um so yeah long story short i think i think it's good to do many things as long as it's not way too many i think one two even three um can be actually very um i don't know i don't know how to call this very like nutritious to your being very nutritious to mm. your whole human being i like that yeah it's i guess like uh like eating a meal you want to have a, a, a variety of foods vegetables mm -hmm. fruits and everything mm -hmm. i mean i guess it's i guess it really depends on the person there's some people that there's just one thing they want to do, right? They just want to act or they just like drawing. And so they do a cartoon strip. But mm -hmm. I mean, it seems like there's a lot of creative people that that like doing different things. And I guess maybe, you know, I've always thought, yeah, I guess maybe you need to try to make it big in one field and then and then you can parlay that into other things. Like, for example, people go to see uh, Woody Allen play clarinet or, or in jazz groups, not because he's a famous jazz musician, but because he's a famous actor or, or screenwriter. Mm -hmm. And so, or, you know, uh, Sylvester Stallone, I think he paints and he sells his paintings. So like, if you get as big as a movie actor, then people might be interested in your paintings. So that was always kind of my dream that if I could, um, yeah, get big with doing something like that, then people might be interested in my other things. Right. Uh, but the, but the other stuff I like to do is sort of combine my talents. Like I was acting when I was a kid in university, I was acting in a play that I uh, saw an audition for in the newspaper. And then I drew a card for the director or when they, they, they made a thank you card for the director and I just signed my name and drew a little cartoon and a woman in the play was like, Hey, that's, I, I like how you can draw so quickly and so well. And um, I'm hosting this cable show where people call in to buy and sell things. And maybe you could be my co-host. And so I wound up sitting beside her. And when people would call in and say, I'm looking to sell my bike or buy a couch, I would sit there and draw a funny cartoon about that kind of thing and then hold it up. So I was able to combine my drawing and my cartoons. And then sometimes now I, I do funny songs, like funny love songs about environmentalists or politicians. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of my dream to be like a Jimmy Fallon where he gets to sometimes play a funny <laughs> song or maybe I could right. draw a cartoon. Um, uh, I don't know. And then I guess now with the internet, there's, you, you could be doing that 
Like yeah. I used to, I used to do community cable shows on TV and I'd have to go to the TV station, do it. But now you could literally broadcast. Well, that's what we're doing right now. We're doing a TV show from home. Exactly. So there's lots of opportunities. And yeah, I don't think you need to, to lock down on one thing. I guess like you're saying, it's, it's, it's a balance. Like, yeah, if you're too mm-hmm. scattered, if you're doing a little bit of everything and never really getting anything done, yeah. But maybe, you know, as long as, I don't think it means you have to sit 12 hours a day writing your screenplay. You could write your screenplay for a couple hours and then, okay, now I'm mm-hmm. going to do my dance class or whatever. So I like it. And I, and I like meeting people like you because it kind of encourages me to, to be like, okay, it's okay to have different talents and different interests and to be, I, I spend too much time talking to, yeah, my parents or, or friends mm-hmm. who are like, what, <laughs> what, you know, what are you doing? And, um, and most people don't get it. So I think it's important Never. to, uh, to be creative. I was actually thinking of starting like a, uh, like a singles group on Facebook. There's so many of these things. It's like, you know, Jewish singles or digital nomad yeah. singles, but I've never oh. seen one. I've never seen one for uh, like creative people. Like mm. and I thought that'd be so cool one day to have, uh, I don't know, to be like um, John Krasinski and Emily Blunt, like, you know, make movies together or, or in, in Canada, there's a comedian, um, Colin Mockery. He's like on whose line is it anyways. And his wife is an actress and they're, this creative power duo kind of thing. So, mm. so who knows? Um, so you, is your accent Mexican or you met your Mexican? I am Mexican. I've worked a lot on my English accent, um, in part because I want to work in the U S as an actor. And so I, let's say I don't have the classic profile for Latina. I don't look, um, the way Americans think about Latinos. So I cannot readily use my face as an asset to work for the Hispanic community. I could do it um, on voiceover. And that's something that I intend to explore later. But um, yeah, it's I just have to neutralize my accent as much as possible just to open up my possibilities. Especially, Maybe. Sorry. Yeah. No, go ahead. Yeah, say especially what? No, especially when you're beginning, because nobody knows you. And so you have to, well, I feel like it's better to have as many options as possible as far as the way you can be uh, cast. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. On the other hand, you know, maybe it's better to focus in on your one unique thing. And that way you can be the best at that rather than trying to, you know, be a bit of everything. Like, who knows? Mm -hmm. Because... Yeah, like I see what you're saying, but I mean, who knows? Maybe you might never be able to have the perfect, you know, white bread American accent. That is very true. But Mm -hmm. if if your benefit is that you do have kind of a a unique Spanish accent, uh, then, you know, maybe go with that. And maybe uh, you're the the non-Latino looking Latina or something. Yeah. Um, I've, I, a lot of people have actually told me that, um, but I'd rather, like, I, I can speak like this, you know? I yeah, can totally I, do it. Yeah, I guess and you'll always have that. I, I'd rather control it and yeah, just yeah. be able to do whatever I want. Yeah, as, so that's, I mean, that's great. And why, why, like, what is your background? Why do you not look Latina? <clears throat> because my dad is a lighter-skinned Mexican, and mm. my mom is a daughter of basically German Jewish that ran away from the war. Well, she's not the daughter. She's the granddaughter of the ones that ran away, but then they came into Mexico and they had babies and they were very light skinned. And so she has like that background. And like my mom has four siblings and all of them look different. It's like a very, um, it's an interesting combination, but my mom is the one that has the lighter hair and like the lighter skin. And so she married my dad and there I am. Very my cool. Light skinned, um, different like shades, but light skinned and light hair. Oh, so. That's fun. You're like a makeup palette, like slightly yeah, different. Yeah, I'm, I'm weird. <laughs> uh, that's cool. Well, I'm Jewish as well. So there you go. Uh, Maybe I should move to Mexico. I don't know. I... Um, well, it's, there's not a lot of Jewish people here. I'm not Jewish. Like, I do not practice. We do not practice. Um, I've, I, I was actually raised as Catholic. Mm. And I'm done with that. All right. Topic for another podcast. Yeah. 
All right. All right. All right. We'll say you're secular now. That's what they <laughs> yeah. say. There's, uh, you know, I, my, there was an article about, uh, I don't know, one of my parents' friends this week, and they were like, he was called a secular Jew. And they're like, why did they bring up it all? Why he's Jewish? And blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I guess it was it was relevant to something. But yeah, so my dad was listing off, you know, there's Orthodox, there's conservative, there's reform, and there's secular, which means, I guess, Jewish by race, but not necessarily practicing the religion. Right. Um, yeah, interesting. I've only been to Mexico uh, once, I guess maybe, God, five or six years ago, this woman I was talking to on JSwipe, which is like a Jewish dating app, like Tinder. Uh, she she was in, uh, she lives in New York, but she went to Mexico for vacation, and she's like, oh, you want to come down? And I was like, I'm going to do it. She didn't think I was going to show up, but I went to Tulum, and I showed up in the middle of the night and uh, stayed at her yoga resort for a little bit. Uh, whoa. And then we went in, went into the city. Yeah, so I, I've only been to Tulum, but nowhere else in Mexico. But it was it was very nice. We sang in, or swam in a cenote. Is that how you say it? Cenote, yeah. Yeah, so that was that was pretty cool. Um, okay, and then, but you had a lot on your, uh, on your bio about New York. Like, have you lived in New York as well? Yes, I uh, both studied and uh, worked in New York for a little while. Mm. And then, um, and so why are you back in Mexico? Um, so I came back to try to do a little bit of work over here, just to have like more, I don't know, integral bio, more integral um, curriculum. Uh, but I'm looking to go back to the U.S. either at the end of this year or next year. I'm working on my visa, and so I kind of need to do as much as I can uh, of everything and have a, a big uh, resume, resume, not curriculum, sorry, a big resume and... Curriculum yeah, vitae. This, yeah, <laughs> curriculum, that's how we call it in Spanish. But yeah, yeah. resume, sorry. No, um, no, no, and, no. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think in English too, it's a uh, curriculum vitae or something is like the mm, fancy yeah. way of saying resume. So. Yeah. So for my resume link, CV. I put like slash CV, which is shorter right. than typing resume, because I don't like it because I think resume should have the accents like in French, resume. So mm -hmm. every time it's right to resume, it kind of bothers me. But it also bothers me to have to go, you know, press the option key and then press the E like every time I'm typing a resume. So I like I like saying CV. It's shorter. <laughs> but yeah, I guess it's like um, I guess it's like here the same way if I wanted to go to the US, I'd have to prove that I'm some something special and deserving of a yeah. special visa, which is exactly. interesting because I never, you know, for years I've always thought, oh, of course I'm going to wind up in L.A. And every time uh, like different advertising producers would see me, they'd be like, oh, why are, why are you still in Canada? Why aren't you in L.A.? And I'm like, oh, right, I should be in L.A. But now I realize, I well, I guess I could go hang out there, but technically I couldn't work. Um, remember I was there a few years ago. <clears throat> staying in a hotel and I wound up talking to someone about being like on a reality dating show and they needed a Jewish person or something. We talked for like an hour about it. And, uh, and then at the end she's like, Oh, I don't know. She realized, wait, do you have a visa to work here? I'm like, I guess not. She's like, Oh, you can't do it. So I was like, Oh man. Like, so there's stuff I could do there. Like, um, I mean, I could still probably do anything I'm doing on the internet because nobody right. knows where in the world, if you're doing voice acting or whatever, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, to actually be there and be on a TV show or something, you don't, you need to have a visa to work. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I guess I guess it's the same for me. I mean, who knows if I'll ever be famous enough for that, but I don't know. I mean, I, I like to think that with YouTube, I mean, maybe the fact that I'm just starting this now, maybe this will become something. Like, um, you know, uh, Lily Singh? No. Okay, well, she was, she was a big YouTuber. She went by the name Superwoman and just oh. doing, she, she's like, she's from, the Toronto area and she's of in Indian descent and uh, yeah, but she became a huge, huge YouTuber. And then now she's in, uh, in LA with her own talk show. Oh, and so, cool. yeah, so she just did it on her own kind of thing. <clears throat> and do you know uh, the YouTuber Philip DeFranco? Ah, oh, sounds familiar. I don't know much about YouTubers in general. That's fine. <laughs> doesn't matter Sorry. i hadn't heard I, no it, i hadn't heard of him either um until recently but i started he does like a daily news show where he sums up the news and then yesterday he gave a shout out um to this you know hey to fellow youtubers um 
so the phone is ringing, super neological or something, or <laughs> something like that, who are um, uh, doing something where uh, they're giving away food to, should I answer this? Is there anybody in the house? Uh, oh. See, there's the, the, the drama of being in a house uh, and not being in a TV studio. Um, he right. gave a shout out to, he said, uh, you know, for these super neological, uh, they're giving away food if you use their name at different restaurants, but they're in Ottawa. And I'm like, who are these people? And I looked up their Instagram and they got yeah. like 2 million, 2 million followers. I'm like, there's people in Ottawa with 2 million what? followers. Like, so I'm like, <laughs> I guess I, I could be anywhere. What's my excuse. Right. Um, and uh, it, I don't even know what they do. I don't know what nail logical means. I don't know if she does nail tips, but then she's got a boyfriend, super Ben logical. I guess Ben is his name. I don't know. I need to research this stuff. Um, but maybe I could become uh, a big Ottawa YouTuber and then get a show somewhere. I don't know. Huh. But Or maybe you and I will co-host a show. Maybe this will be a show every day. People just want to listen to us talk about uh, whatever the maybe. hell we're talking about. Huh. What is that thing <laughs> in the background, that orange thing? Orange. Oh, that's a, a cat toy. Oh, okay, I was like, it looks like, looks like some nice <laughs> fountain or something. I actually, I actually meant to uh, remove it before this. No, no, scratch. that's fine. Whatever. <laughs> I'm just always curious, and it's none of my business. <laughs> and if it's a podcast, people are like, I can't see it. What is the orange thing? And I'm like, it's right. just a thing. <laughs> it just it looks like a little fountain thing. My dad has a little fountain in the living room where the water spills onto different levels. Oh. And, um, but we leave it turned off now because it's it always sounds like like the toilet's running or like so there's a leak somewhere. And then it's like, what is that? <laughs> but he likes it. So that's that's what you realize too when you're in a house with somebody else. They've got different preferences and. And, uh, and yeah, that's why I guess sometimes it's good to live alone. I keep saying I want to be with a roommate again, but then you forget, you know, what's involved with that, right? Like just yeah. uh, who's eating the food in the fridge or who's doing the dishes, or <laughs> yeah. who, who's making noise while somebody's trying to do a podcast thing. Oh, God, yeah. Did All the you... battles I was going to claim, you know, do everything. Yeah. Did you, what kind of living situations did you have when you were in New York? Uh, roommates, always. <laughs> It's hard to afford not to have roommates in New York. Oh, yeah, for sure. I remember I had a friend there who was a lawyer, and he was telling me, this is like long, long maybe 20 years ago, and I, just the, the amount he was paying for rent, I was like, what? I think it was like $5,000 US, or something crazy in a, for this little thing, and I was like, how can anybody live here? I actually got yeah. a job offer in New York 10 <laughs> years ago. They were offering to give me a visa and I would go do ads for Broadway shows, which is kind of cool. But I thought, mm, I don't know if I could afford to live there even with the salary. And then I was like, oh, but I want to be free to, to just do my acting. I want to go there on my own. But it didn't occur to me that, no, I'd never be able to go there on my own. I wouldn't have a visa. I wouldn't have a salary. So that's sure. unfortunate. But uh, I guess it's, I'm trying very hard these days to not live in the past and keep mm -hmm. second guessing every decision I've ever made. Because you, you can't, <laughs> I'm finding, uh, I don't know if you knew this, but you can't actually change the past. No, no, you no. can't. I've tried. Yeah. <laughs> really? You've made a time machine? I've tried making a time machine. Yeah. How's the, uh, it doesn't work. Oh, that's too bad. So, um, so what is, are you living with your parents right now or what's going on? No, I'm living with my boyfriend right now. Oh. Yeah. Where, where is he? Is he in the other room and he's been told to be quiet while you're on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically. Oh, cool. Yeah, he's, he's working on his own thing. What What does he work on? Uh, he's an actor too, and uh, theater direct director. So right now he's trying to uh, write a play. Actually, he already wrote one, and it had a uh, great reviews. So he's writing another one. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Well, that's exciting. So this is you're the creative power couple that I was talking about. Have kind you of, about, yeah. Have you thought about working together, like, you know, be acting in a play he wrote and, or something? Definitely. He keeps saying he's going to write a play for me. <laughs> mm. um, but that's, not, yeah, that's actually one of the reasons I came back to Mexico City, because we, <coughs> I was working with him on his previous play. It's, uh, like, a very postmodern-ish, uh, musical-ish play. Nobody sings, but there's a lot of music, and there's some dance, and there's a lot of um, movement. Like, so I was basically the choreographer and coach 
movement coach or movement director, as he called it, for the actors. And wow, can I can I ask how you guys met? Yeah, we actually met uh, when I was still pursuing a dance career about five years ago. We met in the National Center for the Arts in Mexico City. That's like a big art school. It's like the biggest. And um, he was studying acting in the acting school. And I have a friend who was my best friend from uh, when I was a kid. And we hadn't talked for a few years. And, uh, and so I went to visit Mexico before moving to New York, actually. And we met in the school because she was studying there and they were in the same group. And so that's how I met him. So you remember, you remember the very moment we were like, oh, hello. Like, did, were you like, oh, yeah. oh, yeah, this is going to be my boyfriend? Or like, how does it mm -hmm. go from this just stuff fascinates me, how you, you meet someone and then it's like, oh, hey, do you want to, what's your number? Like, how did you get together? Again? It's so interesting. Um, it was actually very complicated because I was about to move to New York and I was in San Francisco first for two years and he was obviously in school. So the moment that I saw him was a production meeting for a little play they were doing for school. And so I was basically just like there. I like, I wasn't supposed to be there, but my friend was like, okay, I have to do this. Why don't you just come with me and then we'll go take, have, have some coffee or something after. And so I was there and that's how I met her, all of her friends, all of the group. And from the moment I saw him, I felt like I knew him from somewhere. Like he felt so familiar. I, I felt like curious, like a curiosity, like I want to know who this person is. Mm. And he kind of felt a similar thing. So I don't know. I guess that's, it's like a magnet. Yeah, yeah. Thing. Weird. Um, it was complicated. We were together for about uh, two or three months during the summer and then I moved to New York and we tried uh, the long distance thing. It was really hard. Then he went to New York. We stayed there for a couple, for a year, year and a half. And then we went back to Mexico and now we are planning to go back to New York at some point as soon as my visa is ready. Wow, that's very cool. Would, would he need a visa as well? Um, yeah, yeah, we, we both need visas. Technically, if we get married, he could get like a visa that's kind of like a link to visa to mine, but yeah. we're both trying to get our own so we can both work. Yeah, or whoever gets it first, then you marry that, you know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Cool. That's, I don't know, that's, that's a good story. I like that story. It reminds me of, um, I think Ryan Reynolds talks about how he met his girlfriend, like he was on a double date with like someone else or something, but there was just this connection between him and uh, I guess, is it Blake Lively he's married to? And, mm -hmm. and so they just sort of knew and then they wound up, actually, I think my dad was saying it was the same thing. That's, he was on a double date with, uh, <clears throat> with someone else and wound up liking my mom as well. But yeah, I think in my, in my life, there's been people that, yeah, you definitely feel an instant connection with. I remember when I was, in my first year university, uh, after a couple of months, I went back to, uh, to Ottawa. I was in university in Toronto and I came back for Thanksgiving and my friends from high school were like, oh, do you have a girlfriend? And I'd never had a girlfriend. I never kissed a girl, whatever. But there was this girl I liked and I was like, yeah, yeah, it's this girl, uh, um, Sarah or whatever. And, uh, and, uh, and then wound up like a month later, we wound up kissing or whatever. And then we were dating for a little bit until I broke up with her for no reason. Uh, which was stupid, but, uh, but yeah, you kind of sense that, yeah, there's somebody I'm interested in or whatever. And then I just, I just hope that you can still, that grownups can still have that. Like I remember feelings like that of first love or, you know, when you're young and, and things are, are new, but, uh, and I, I was just thinking about that recently about how in my diary, like after I first kissed a girl, I wrote like pages and pages, I kissed a girl, this whole detailed <laughs> stories and whatever. And I'm like, as a grown up, is that ever, can you ever even feel anything close to that? Is it going to be like, you know, am I ever going to write in a diary? Like, oh my God, I met someone or whatever. I don't know. But hopefully, or maybe that's what life is. You have those experiences and then you just think about them in the past. I don't know. Are you still having, I mean, obviously you're not as old as me, but do you still, do you still have hopes and, 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 and dreams and 
looking forward to excitement things? Yeah, kind of, in a more um, grounded way, I would say. I, I was that type of person that had dreams and didn't really think how to get to them in a very practical way. I was like, oh, I'm just gonna, you know, go to San Francisco and find my destiny while I'm, oh, sorry, while I'm at school. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Getting all the notifications um, as well? Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, and then when I was in New York, when I moved to New York, it was like life giving me a slap in the face and telling me, hey, this is the real world and it's not that easy and especially in New York, and it's actually very similar to Mexico City. People don't have time to make friends. So I was I was expecting, for example, to arrive to school and like have a, a group of friends and that didn't happen because everybody was tired all the time. So all your free time, you just wanted to go to sleep and not see anybody. Um, so living in New York, actually, I feel like I became an adult there, like a real adult. And so now I'm, I'm trying to find a balance, like being realistic and actually trying to make a sort of plan or a sort of like list of steps that I like. I try to structure my life a little bit better now, just to to not lose time. I I think it's kind of dumb, but I I like I, I like to use time in the most. Um, effective way possible. I don't like to to lose my time. Yeah, no, that, that time. yeah, no. That, I mean, that's definitely what I've uh, I've I've realized lately how much time I've wasted in my life. And I guess uh, on the one hand, I mean, you can always get older and look back and think, oh my god, I wasted my life. But I mean, at the time you were living it, and maybe that's the fun of being young. You feel like you've got all the time in the world, so you can right. just watch a movie or or read a book or whatever and not be all stressed out that, oh my God, like I'm wasting every minute. But I do regret, I was just, I was just saying to a friend today on the phone, it's like, God, when I was just finishing university or something, why didn't I just pack up and go to LA or something? And she's like, well, why didn't you? I'm like, I don't know. I figured I should have a job and I was working in advertising and I did occasional stand up comedy and occasional, um, uh, improv comedy and stuff. So I, I sort of did it, but I never, I don't even know what I would do different now if I could, but I guess, uh, I, I, I mean, I look back and I'm like, oh, I should have taken radio school and become a big radio DJ like Howard Stern or something. Mm -hmm. But I don't even know if radio college existed. Like when, when I finished university, um, my mom sent me an article about copywriting school and I'm like, okay, I guess I'll take copywriting. That's creative. <clears throat> but, and I guess people change too. I guess I found it interesting at the time to do advertising, but um and then and then you go oh why did i whoa sorry i just dropped the uh -oh. phone uh you know why did i waste time writing commercials for other people when i could have been doing my own acting i don't know well. um but it's interesting because i've been messaging a lot of uh i don't know if you're interested in this stuff at all <laughs> but uh but this week while i've been in quarantine i was like you know what i should message all my old university friends and mm -hmm. uh, my high school friends and all these people that um, I haven't talked to because I thought it'd be useful to, you know, you touch base with people that are your age that did the same things. And <laughs> yeah, not everybody. I mean, some people are, well, everybody's in a different space. Like some people never had kids. Some people are have kids, but they're getting divorced now. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people are running their own law firms. Um, is that, is that some traffic going on? Sorry, going yeah. On? I, I no, mean, okay. I don't understand why people still are still going out honestly yeah. are you in mexico city yeah. yeah yeah it's getting it's getting it's just getting bad here just like oh. barely starting to go real bad really so yeah because it sounds trying to stay inside that's good yeah it sounds like they're opening things up elsewhere like they're well mm -hmm. they're talking about I opening up so. Las Vegas. but i i'm i'm I, I drop into these classes that a friend started uh, to teach english to pe people in vietnam and they're like yeah we're all we're all going to the, or some girls like, I'm going to the bar tonight because they've opened, now we can go back to bars and the beaches are open. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess, right. I guess we'll see, we'll see what happens. But it's we'll funny because the weather's getting nicer here. Um, mm. 
in Ottawa. And uh, so I went for a walk yesterday. I'm like, everybody's kind of walking outside. It's easier to stay isolated when it's cold out. But once it starts getting warmer, I think everybody's going to be like, screw it. Let's just go outside. It's bad. Like, yeah. Cause he's, and it starts to, the longer this quarantine lasts, the, I, I'm sort of almost starting to forget that it's real. Like you're outside, you're like, yeah, I'm walking. Like you, I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, that's right. I'm not supposed to be touching anything. Like it's sort of plays with this mind mm-hmm. game. Yeah. But people keep saying like, oh yeah, are you depressed? Or, or somebody on Facebook said, it looks like you're going stir crazy. Cause I, I post videos of me walking at night and just talking to my phone and complaining about regrets or whatever. And I said, yeah, it's not really, it's not really the quarantine. I actually don't mind the quarantine because my life was kind of this anyways. Like I, Right. <laughs> left my, I left my advertising job five years ago, so I just work on my laptop anyways. And um, I always have FOMO, fear of missing out. So I never want to do my videos. So I'm like, oh, I should be traveling. I should be out partying. I should be doing something. But now nothing's going on anywhere. So I feel like it's okay to to be inside. So I'm kind of dreading when they, if they open things up again, it'll be like, oh, now everybody's out doing things again. And what am I doing? Um, <laughs> it's more that I wish I was like you and I had a boyfriend to be with or, or, um, or a, a family with kids and stuff. So that's a whole other issue. It's funny because I always thought, I always broke up with my girlfriends because I always thought, no, 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 I'm not ready to have my life set in stone yet. Like, this isn't the girl. I'm going to be in Hollywood. I'm going to marry Julia Roberts. Or I don't know where my life is going. I'm going to be so <laughs> famous. And why would I wind up settling with just a regular person who knew me when I was a regular person? It was, you know, silly thoughts like that, right? And then life goes by and you're like, maybe I'm not going to be Brad Pitt. Like maybe that's not, and even Brad Pitt <laughs> keeps getting divorced or whatever. So right. I don't know. And then I realized, you know what? The people who seem really happy are people like, um, you know, Hugh Jackman, uh, who, you know, met an actress when she was famous and he wasn't. And then they got married and then he's been with the same person or, or Tom Hanks is, uh, Rita Wilson, I'm not even sure who she is, but, you know, <laughs> they obviously met and enjoyed each other's company. And it's not about finding someone that just wants you because, oh, now you're rich and famous. Mm-hmm. It's just about being someone who loves you for you. And then if you take that journey together, oh, my God, now you get to live in the famous mansion together or whatever. So, yeah. well, I'm, gl- I'm glad you've got your boyfriend. But if you break up with him, don't feel too bad either. Um, no. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. You never Especially know. with this kind of life. Um, but I've found it actually very, it, it's nice. It's nice to have someone that understands how this career is and that we, like, we can have a kind of flexibility. We can have flexibility in like, oh, I need to do something in New York now. Okay, well, let's go together and let's try to do something together. Or like, you do your thing, I do my thing. Oh, now I, I don't know, I want this thing to have a season of my play in Mexico City okay all right let's go for a little while and let's like we that's kind of like a lucky thing to have when you're an artist I think I I actually always thought that I needed a partner who was an artist too because I never thought that anybody else would understand me and um I actually dated a couple doctors Mm. um when I was younger uh but no, it didn't. It didn't work out. Nobody understood that. But this goes first. Um, I actually didn't have any friends in high school either. Like you, you're you're telling me, oh, I talked to my friends of high. I know I don't have people that I talk to from high school. I was never available. <laughs> I was always going to classes and rehearsal and stuff. So. Yeah. No. I mean, when I say I'm messaging my friends from high school. I mean, I didn't really have a lot of friends. I was in a gifted program, so there was a few people um, that uh, yeah, I was friends with, I guess. But I, w- I was very shy. I didn't really know how to go to parties or whatever. I, I used to sort of, I knew where where people would drive, like on the way to parties and stuff. So I would stand on a street corner. I'd sit on this big, uh, like, hydro energy box and just sort of sit there and then wait for people to drive by. And they'd be like, oh, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I don't know. Like, what's... Uh, is there a party going on kind of thing? Like, I didn't know how to just call people. Or this, my friend Dave Roach, he would, I, I knew his schedule when he worked at the gas station. So I'd always make sure I was biking sort of that way when he was biking home. And he'd be like, oh, what a coincidence, Josh. And oh. I'm like, yeah, is there any parties? And he'd be like, yeah, come with me and stuff. So very awkward. But but yeah, I never kept in touch with any, even any of those people. So that's why I'm trying to look up the people now on Facebook and just reconnect. And, and in a way in a way it kind of feels like maybe it's grounding me a bit. Like it's sort of 
I mean, I can't get back those 30 years, but uh, I don't know, maybe stop. I always dreamed that, I always imagined that I would have a life where you have friends and then you're just friends your whole life. You know, you make new memories in your 20s and your 30s and you raise your kids together. You go to the cottage together. And I, I just, I've never kept in touch. You see it in stuff. What's that? Right. So you see it in movies and stuff. And so you expect yeah. that that's life codes. Edited. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. I assumed that was it. I, I don't know. And then, yeah, you build this life together and then, you know, you're always comparing, oh, here's the pictures of us when we were younger. And then you make new memories. But instead, I just sort of, you know, I don't know. I guess I was just always on dating apps and I would meet new people, but you'd know people for a week and then never again. And so, and I guess it's also different if everybody gets married and has kids when they're younger and you're like, oh, I'm not going to do that. And then mm -hmm. you don't really have anything in common with them. Like, yeah. what am I, what am I going to do? And it also makes me feel sad to talk to people with kids or grown kids because yeah. I feel like I don't have that. And that's almost all they talk about and all they care about. And it makes sense. Like once you've got a wife and kids, that's kind of your world. Exactly. Like it, it, Maybe you're in your own head. You're still like, no, 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 I'm still 18 and you're still 18 and maybe we can get together again. But I mean, that's crazy talk. Um, I know. <laughs> I, uh, but uh, but yeah, the closest I've had to a, a creative partner like that. Like I remember I had I dated this girl Jan years ago and I was doing stand up and I was like, you should do stand up. She didn't want to, but she tried it and she was really good at it. But I don't think it was her passion. But anyways, we mm. broke up. I broke up with her. But um, but I did meet this girl a few years ago who saw me on a dating site and I had talked about this short film I was making about a towel. Uh, uh, towel? <laughs> yeah, I made this project uh, for work. They wanted me to do a, a video for Procter & Gamble. Um, oh. And uh, talking about different opportunities in the house for fabric care. And so I made up a, a character. It was like a talking towel named Terry Cloth. And I made a puppet show with him talking about, Ooh. oh, you, here's my aunt curtains or, or <laughs> like different things. And then I had things like, there was like lingerie he was showing that was a relative but then the png was like oh that's too risque or whatever so so but somebody i think the guy who worked on the sound for it like at the sound studio was like this is so creative this is so interesting this should be like a, a late night cable show or something so i wanted to make a uh, a short film about the character that i could do whatever i wanted and in my head it was going to be like uh, you know like strippers if they sit on your lap and give you a lap dance they usually put a towel on your lap so they don't get germs oh. and I thought okay maybe the towel works at a strip club but he has dreams of like becoming a famous knitter and he wants to join knitting contests I don't know what I was thinking but I met this girl or she she was actually doing research to uh she wanted to write a screenplay about online dating but she never did it so she made a so she was just looking through the site at profiles for research but she saw my profile and then she paid to sign up so that she could message me. And then I went and visited her in her small town. And, or she came to visit me first. And then, and then, yeah, I wound up staying with her. And we wrote the screenplay together for a weekend. And it became more of a, a nice love story, but a towel that falls in love with a girl and then wants to write her a love song. But he doesn't have hands, so he can't play it for her. So he takes <laughs> all his, uh, he has all these magazines about knitting and, and crochet, like uh, different fabrics magazines. Uh, I don't even know where I got those. <laughs> Um, I think maybe I, oh, I probably got them for the original Procter and Gamble one. Somebody bought, yeah, somebody went to the, mm. I think I, I bought them all and I was able to expense it. So, right. uh, cause they're expensive magazines cause nobody buys them. So, um, right. so anyway, so it became this love story about, about her. So then, yeah, the towel trades in the magazines at a pawn shop to, uh, to get a guitar. Oh no. First he has to become a person. So he wishes to his fairy cloth mother to become a person so that he wow. has hands, but then he needs a guitar. So he makes all these sacrifices and sings her a song. And it was beautiful. And I wrote this song that was just inspired by her. And uh, yeah, it's on, uh, it's on my YouTube. And then, uh, anyway, so that was the closest I had to, to somebody creative. And I was like, it was kind of cool to be like, hey, we're going to write this movie together. Because I also find it's very lonely if you're writing or write working a screenplay. You feel like, you know, the world is passing by and I'm sitting alone. But if you've got somebody that's also sitting there writing or that you're writing it together, <laughs> it, it makes you feel less lonely, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, hmm. I guess so. So, yeah, she's married with kids now, too, or whatever. So, okay. um, but, but hopefully I can still even just meet people creatively. I'm even, even just doing interviews like this, I feel good, right? Like it gets you out of your mm -hmm. own head for a bit. Like I can you know, meet some, like I never, if I wasn't doing interviews, there's no reason we'd be talking for 45 minutes mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or, or at all. Um, so that makes me happy. So yeah, so that's, that's very cool. Well, I'm, gl I'm glad you've got that partner and, and whatever it is, wherever it goes, it's, it'll be one of those 
epic stories where you know the, the big director and the the glamorous actress dancer and hopeful <laughs> you know, hopefully you'll be telling the story on Jimmy Kimmel one day i hope yeah. <laughs> but yeah it's interesting how relationships seem to come and go like not i mean you know a lot of people have the love story for their whole lives like my grandparents and all that which is all nice uh, but then other people are like yeah Brad Pitt dated Jennifer Aniston, but then he didn't. And then he was with uh, Angelina Jolie, but then he's back with Jennifer Aniston or whatever. So you never know what's going to happen. Everybody's mad at, um, oh, what's his name? Zach Braff. Or he's a, he's a comedian. Oh, well, I'm not mad at him, but I think, was it on Philip DeFranco? I think it was. That's how I know everything. Because um, he's dating, I guess he's about 45 and he's got a girlfriend who's a big oscar nominated actress or someone who's only 24 and she wished him a happy oh. birthday and then everybody piled on and said how creepy that oh, is and it's abusive. oh yeah i think i heard about that yeah <sighs> that's so, so annoying like why why do people care so much about other people's lives like personal lives it's none of your business Just let yeah them be. no well that's what everybody is right it's all about bothering people and complaining <laughs> yeah. as as i've gotten older i've realized I don't think I've ever cared about it. You know, it's like people do their own thing, but especially now I'm like, really? You got, but I think that's what it is, right? It, it makes people feel better about their own. I, I think if people are genuinely happy and satisfied in their life, they're not going to have the time or energy to want to attack other people. I think it that just makes, I, I would imagine it just makes people feel better to attack others and mm -hmm. whatever. Um, but anyways, that gave me hope that I can still meet a, a Hollywood actress. So <laughs> we'll see. You, you hear all these stories about like how Jessica Alba met, you know, went up marrying a guy who was like a PA on the set or whatever. And you're like, oh, my God. Right. You ever seen the movie Notting Hill? Yeah. Yeah. Like that's, Long time ago. Yeah. Uh, me too. I don't remember. But I just, that's, you know, when I have dreams, that's kind of the dream I have, that I'm a regular Joe, like, Hugh Grant, because <laughs> he's a regular Joe. <laughs> yeah, I guess it helps if you look like Hugh Grant and you own a bookstore. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, but yeah, but I also dreamed that I was Spider Man a lot, like, and then, uh, and 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 then I reveal my face to to the girl and stuff. I have a lot of oh, dreams. Okay. That's I try to, uh, especially when I take melatonin, I have very intense dreams. But <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. I guess you just got to take it day by day, and so. Um, so what's what's your what's your immediate plan? That you're so you're in quarantine right now. You're hoping to get a visa. Things are still shut down, so you can't really be doing dancing. Like, what are you working on right now? Um, I'm actually starting to explore uh, playwriting. So I I have these ideas. Um, I'm also gonna take a class, an acting class online with a famous director. Well, I'm waiting to see if I'm gonna be in the group. <laughs> Uh, uh -huh. He's going to announce it on the 26th, so that would be... I don't even know what day is it. Is it uh, like today's Friday. Yeah, Sunday the 26th, I guess. Oh, so today. Today I'll know, but I'm I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm hoping I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have that. That's going to be in May. Um, and other than that, I'm just like trying to remain, remain sane, doing yoga. I'm reading a lot. Um... I'm like just contemplating life also, <laughs> like mm. allowing myself to do the things that I usually cannot do, which is sleeping and contemplating life. Um, and I think that's actually a positive thing. I think the best ideas sometimes or many times come to you when you're just still. Mm -hmm. And so quarantine is actually, it's not being that bad for me. Like, when I have time, like on weekends, if I'm not doing anything or if I don't have rehearsal or anything, I would much rather stay home and like relax, do something creative, watch a movie, maybe, I don't know, practice a monologue or something, um, write. Uh, I would much rather do any of that than go out to a club. I was never that type of person. So I'm actually kind of enjoying it. I, I just hate to have all this uncertainty. Um, obviously, our play is suspended. Like, everything is suspended until now. Mm -hmm. uh, we were told that in May, they were going to, like, see if in May we could reopen. But obviously, that's not going to happen. So now we're just, like, waiting. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Because it's on the one hand, I realize it's only been 
like a month and a bit. Like it hasn't, you know, originally I was thinking, oh my God, this is going to last 10 years or whatever, which I still wouldn't mind, but it, that's a long <laughs> time. Um, but then I'm like, yeah, month, like, I don't even know what I did with January and February. Like time flies for sure. Exactly. At, and then especially for somebody like you or me who's creative and you you want to spend your time taking classes or whatever. Like I understand it's a different situation if people have a job that they can't do from home, like you're working at a whatever it is, like at a store or, or something and 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 you know, your life isn't about just sort of sitting and being artistic. Um, but for people like us, yeah, I mean it's it's not a bad opportunity. Like I was saying, it's like you don't feel you're not missing anything out. You you don't mm-hmm. you don't have to be at a conference or whatever, so you might as well write that play or exactly or what, whatever it is. So I'm I'm glad you're you're getting that time. Is your family live nearby or? Um, kind of, not really. We live um towards the south, south center of Mexico City, and they live in the very northern area. Um, it's also a huge city. It's huge, like insanely huge. Like if you were born in the northern area, for example, like I was, you like never go to some places. You just never go. It's like it's another city. It feels like another city completely. Yeah. Um, and so we've, I mean, we've kind of seen each other a couple times since this started. It's also like people started taking uh, the quarantine seriously only like a couple weeks ago. <laughs> mm. um, but me and my family started because um, we saw how it went outside in the world. So I was like, I'm not going to risk it. And this, like, the play is probably going to be shut down and probably everything's going to be shut down. Like, I'm, I don't think we're going to be able to do many things this year. Um, so, yeah. yeah, we are like kind of like on opposite sides of the city. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I can't even imagine how big, how big the city is in Toronto. Yeah, it seems big, but yeah, Mexico's pretty huge. And so do you ever leave, I'm just curious, like do you ever, do you leave the house? Do you go to get groceries or something? Yeah, um, we try to not get out very much. Uh, We try to buy groceries for at least two weeks. Yeah. Uh, It never lasts though. (laughs) We have to go out every like 10 days or so. Um, And yeah. Do you go for walks? Like do you go to a park or? Um, I have tried not to, but I've just been out for a walk, like, two times. Um, okay, so you haven't yeah. been outside today or yesterday? Nope. Nope? Okay, that's good. Stay safe. Better better yeah. safe than sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, every time I go out, I'm like, oh, did I get too close to someone? Like, what was I doing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, better. Just... What I'm worried about, though, because I, you know, it's... it's uh, it's starting to get a bit warmer here and it's going to be summer soon. And I, I think it, you know, it's not like I'm going to be suddenly younger and I'll have married the right person. It's not going to change anything, but, but I do feel better when it's uh, a bit warmer out, I'm realizing. Um, mm-hmm. And then just the thought of, okay, summer's going to fly by in four months and then it'll be September, October, start getting cold again. I'm like, Oh, I don't know if I can handle that. Like for my mental health, like unless my life is so perfect that I'm happy again, I don't know if I can do it. So I'm starting to think, okay, I'm going to have to, move to some warmer climate just sort of go hang out in miami or mexico or vietnam with all my students somewhere cheap. That. yeah they were just saying what was some girl saying in the class we had a little group chat on facebook after and she's like i do modeling like normally models make like a dollar an hour but i make 20 dollars an hour because my skin uh is very smooth Perfect. or something they don't they don't have <laughs> yeah they don't have to keep redoing the makeup or something and i'm like a dollar an hour so I'm like, huh, it probably would be cheap. I could go live there like a king and just do like one voiceover job a month or something. Yeah, so, you totally could. It's, it's funny, weird. like when, when I was younger, I always thought, yeah, I should go travel. And I know people, my friend Dennis in university, he went to Korea and then Japan and he was there for like 30 years teaching English. And now he's back in Canada with a, a, yeah, a wife and a couple of Japanese kids. Um, <laughs> wow. But uh, yeah, I think... <clears throat> I don't know if he married one of his students. I think he did originally, then got divorced and married another student. What was my point? Oh, yeah, it's different when you're younger, I guess. You sort of go, oh, yeah, I'm just going to go take off. But then now I'm like, oh, I miss my family. Like if I went away and I didn't see my parents for years or or my sister has a couple of kids and they're going to grow up without me. So it's funny, even even without a wife and kids, you sort of think, okay, well, where's, what are my ties? Like what would prevent me from moving to L.A. or to Vietnam? 
so I don't know. But uh, I'll keep looking at it. I've, I, I applied for a couple of jobs in the fall for, like, I'm always applying for radio station jobs. And then finally, a couple of places got back to me because it's hard to break into the industry. They all want, like, a 20 year old that can grow with it and start in a small town for no money and work for 20 years or whatever. Um, it's hard to just break. And there's not a lot of jobs anyways. Like it's not really, right. uh, unless you're Howard Stern and you've already made a hundred million dollars or whatever. Um, but yeah, a couple of places got back to me, like in small towns, like in Saskatchewan, like this little town with 16,000 people and it'd be like minimum wage and I'd be on the air once a week and otherwise be reporting or, or somebody sounds got good. back to me. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, I don't know. Yeah sounds cozy and then, yeah again maybe it's something i would have done when i was 20 you feel like oh that's cool i'm in the little small town but then it just sounded depressing to do it now like i'll i don't know and then there's another town that said like a smaller town in ontario that said why do you want to come to timmins and i never got back I'm like yeah why would i want to move to timmins or wherever <laughs> like you start you start realizing i thought my dream was to be on the radio but then i'm like yeah if i was on the radio like that's your job like you have to be there every day every morning there's no vacation like at that Saskatchewan thing, they, there's no vacation for the year, so you'd literally be doing it, not going anywhere for a year. Oh, no. Yeah, so so I don't know. No vacation. Uh, I mean, it's not that I care about vacation. Even when I had a job, I never took vacation because I liked being productive. But now I realize, no, I could have used that time to be creative on my own. I didn't have to be working yeah. with ads. So I still think, <laughs> you know, maybe I should just go to Los Angeles. and I, you, know, you know what? I don't know. I think by doing this show, it'll be I'll have my hour podcast a day and maybe uh, – yeah, and I, who knows? And then I could travel and still have a home base somewhere, but still be reaching people everywhere. It makes me feel good to to have these discussions and to be uh, mm. to broadcasting. So who knows? Who knows? It, as long as I do this every day, I think that's what matters. If I spend another month or a whole year going, oh yeah, one day I got to do these interviews, it's, nothing's ever going to happen. Yeah. But if I do it do it like this, and I just say no, every single day I've got to interview someone. At the mm -hmm. end of the year, I'll have at least three hundred sixty five shows and. You can't really control how famous you get. You just have to do your best. But at least you can say you tried. I see. You know, mm -hmm. I did. I, I did a show every day, and it did what it did. But at least, at least you've tried, right? So exactly. There you go. Well, I guess uh, you know. At the beginning, I asked you before we got on. I'm like, you know, what's your hard stop? You're like, oh, well, I got to do something at like two thirty or something. I'm like, oh, that's an hour from now. We're only going to talk for like twenty minutes, or, maybe five, <laughs> yeah. or even five minutes. Uh, but it's looking at fifty-seven minutes and forty seconds now. So. Thank you for uh, for joining us, Hildy. And oh, we never talked about you. Know, okay, let's say we'll make this an hour. Um, what your stage name? So, like, what is your full name or your stage name, or how did that work? Okay, that's. I have a very long name. I have a well in Mexico and I think most uh, Hispanic countries you have two last names. It kind of works um, like the it, it, yeah. It kind of has the function of the middle name in America, I don't know if in Canada too, yep. like you have your first name and your last name, but oh, you always or usually have a middle name that kind of um, differentiates you from your dad if your dad has the same name. But in right. Mexico, instead of that, we have two last names and many people still have two first names as well, it's crazy. Um, but anyways, I have a, a long first name, Hildegard, right? That's a yeah. German name and then my first last name, my dad's, is Ruiz Esparza. That's two words. And then my mom's last name is another word. And so there's four words in my name, and they're long. Yes. Um, and so for, for a few years, well, a couple of years now since I finished school, I've been thinking, like, oh, should I maybe just use one of those? Should I, like, what can I do? Um, and I was using my mom's for a little while, actually, because it kind of goes better with my name because it's a German last name and then a German first name. Um, but uh, last year, I came up with the idea of making a last name, like fabricating a last name from the first letters of all my last name words. <laughs> so it's R-E-W. And I realized that sounds like a word. And that sounds like last name. And it sounds like European-ish, so it could go with my name, and it's easier for people to remember. Um, so now I'm holding Rue. Oh, I love it. See, there's a story that, you know, because they, uh, I, I research stage names all the time, and and, uh, and people like to ask the story of, like, you know, what's the mm -hmm. story? So it's, and they say it's good to have a story, not just be like, I don't know. So then you've got a whole, <laughs> you've got a whole story about your whole history and everything. 
I, I was just researching uh, Zendaya's name. I thought it was Zendaya, but she says it's Zendaya. I, I discovered. Oh, um, I didn't know it and she said, yeah, like her name is like that too. It's got her whole like Zendaya is her real first name, but it's Zendaya something something something, and she's yeah. half all these different cultures and stuff. So she says her name is kind of like it's literally like a timeline of all her 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 background or whatever. Um, Interesting. So that's cool. Yeah, no, I, I'm always, because my name's Josh Rackless. It's hard to spell. It's just like a made up, it's not made up, but it's like some kind of Russian background and mm. it's probably should be pronounced Rachlis or something. <laughs> yeah. um, so even when I was on the radio originally before, I guess the internet was still around. Yeah, 10 years or 15 years ago. But, but you know, I'd say it's Josh Rackless and I'd be like afraid that, oh, what if people want to look me up and, and can't find me and stuff? That's uh, what I thought too. Yeah, so... Uh, so that's why I'm going by Celebrity Josh for now. I made up that name uh, at work a few years ago. Somebody said, hey, can you make one of your funny web series things? Like another creative team wanted me to do something, and they had an idea for somebody to be a celebrity hunter and trying to get celebrities to try this Orville Redenbacher popcorn at the film festival. So I was looking up names like Celebrity Hunter or the Celebrity Hunter on YouTube, and everything was taken. And I thought, well, you know what? Crocodile Dundee hunts crocodile, so he's Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> right. And I hunt celebrities, so I'm Celebrity Josh. So I got the name on like Twitter and, and uh, the dot com for some reason. Um, and then, yeah, so and then I wasn't really using it. But then I guess a few years ago, I met this woman who was running for mayor. And, and yeah, she's the one who builds the websites. And, and she was she's like, you know, do you have something that's easier to spell? I said, I don't know. I could go with Celebrity Josh. She's like, I like that. So I don't like it. So I'm using it for now. I don't like it because it's still linked to Josh. Cause, and I just feel like Josh is too common a name. Like it's just, you know, I want to be unique and I also want something shorter, like celebrity Josh too, too long, even though it's like calamity Jane, it's, it's not, I, so I say, okay, that's okay that way, <laughs> but I'd love to be somebody like, like sting or pink, uh, like just one word, like the shortest thing. Mm -hmm. Cause there was a Saturday night live skit last week, uh, where uh, Pete Davidson was doing like a joke about Drake songs. Like he was like, this is a Drake song. I miss my ex-girlfriend. This is a Drake song. And I'm like, <laughs> and, and it works because Drake is just one short thing. And it's right. like, you know, if his name was Josh Rackless, you wouldn't be, this is a Josh Rackless, it'd be too long. This is not celebrity Josh. It's like Arnold Schwarzenegger song. Like, no, it's like, you gotta have mm -hmm. one syllable. So, right. But you'll never get the dot com for that. But of course, even Sting doesn't have at Sting on Instagram. He's official Sting or whatever. So right. And then I keep thinking, what if I play James Bond one day? Is it going to say Celebrity Josh on the poster? Like, can you picture Celebrity? Like, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> um, but realistically, am I going to play James Bond? I don't know. Pierce Brosnan just said he was told, you know, more people have walked on the moon than have played James Bond. So and then I think, you know what, maybe I can just keep having different names like... Uh, um, Donald Glover raps under um, Childish Gambino like you could have so maybe I just keep working at it and, and then something will come maybe one day I'll marry Jennifer Lawrence and she'll be like no no your name is you know uh, Eggplant or something I don't know <laughs> <laughs> I do like the name Spark I don't know why I don't, it doesn't mean Spark. anything at all but I just keep thinking that's kind of a cool try that yeah and then Sting, Bink those are not even human names no, Sting is just because he was in a bar once and uh, he was wearing a sweater that had like black and yellow stripes. So he looked like a bee and the owner said, hey, I'm going to call you Sting. And that's it. Uh, uh, and I forget what I forget why Pink's name is Pink. It, probably just because she likes the color pink. I don't know. Everybody's got a story. I mean, Drake is just his middle name. His real name is Aubrey Drake Singer. He's half Jewish, oh, too. Wow. Yeah. So, but yeah, but you know, you could see as a rapper, would he be famous as Aubrey Singer? Probably not, right? Mm -hmm. So Thomas Mapother, that's Tom Cruise's real name. He's from Ottawa. Ah. Uh, so yeah, so I don't know. But I think names start to take on meaning too. Like you just, if you like someone, then the name seems to fit. It's fine. Like what does Lady Gaga mean? That sounds ridiculous, right? But it, <laughs> <laughs> it works, works for her. Hildy Rue. So there we go. We've got your name. And uh, very cool. All right. Well, maybe every show I'll call myself something different, like I'm Spark or something, and see how it goes. Uh, they used to call me Iceman in high school because one time I went out with, we played football every day at lunch, and I would go outside with it was just a t shirt on in the snow. They're like, oh my God, you're like Iceman. I'm like, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> but I don't know if that still fits. It, also, if you're a rapper, you can have names like Ice, but if you're a comedian, does that yeah. make sense? I don't know. Um, you could try that. Yeah, I mean, there's Cedric the Entertainer. 
Yeah, which what name do we like? What the Iceman? Uh, Iceman, and I I like Spark too. Okay, okay. I don't. I mean, I don't I think looked... you have to have a human name. No. Really... Okay, cool. All right. Well, we'll see. Yeah, and then. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe I'll keep changing it. We'll see. Although that'll be harder for branding. People are like, who are you? How do I look you up? We'll see how it goes. <laughs> we'll, we'll be Celebrity Josh for now, and then then we'll just go with a stage name, and then I've got a whole story to tell. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, Hildy Rue. And uh, I guess at the end, I'm supposed to say, like, is there something that, uh, you know, if people want to look you up, or should they find you, or whatever, or just, I could just put your Instagram link in the description, or not. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, you could you could do that. I mean, I'm like Hildy Rue on Instagram. It, there's just a dot in between Hildy Rue. Oh yeah. Is there a um, Hildy Rue without a dot nope. anywhere? Well, nope. no, but I, I wanted people to not no, think no. that it's a word because it kind of it look it could look like a word. Um, oh yeah, no, I'm not saying it's you shouldn't have the dot. I'm just curious. I'm always because <laughs> there was there was a guy like I was trying to get celebrity Josh on Instagram for years. And there was just this profile that this little 11 year old kid or something had one picture that he posted like eight years ago. And I was like, this is not a real profile. Oh, I, kept, I kept reporting it and stuff. Finally got shut down. <laughs> and, and then, uh, and I was going to, I talked to copyright lawyers. They were like, yeah, it'll take about four years and thousands of dollars to get the copyright. To, but finally I was able to get the things. So I'm like, okay, I got it. Cause I'm like, I didn't want to be celebrity dot Josh. I'm like, I have to be celebrity Josh. But there's also this guy <laughs> on Facebook has facebook.com slash celebrity Josh because he has an Indian blog. It was about like an Indian. Josh means like uh, gossip or something. So it's like the celebrity Josh, whatever. 